Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the show radio. This episode 654 of the show. I'm your host, Andrew. Hey guys, and I'm Danny. And this is your source for the tech, gaming, and entertainment news. Make sure you catch us on all the podcast platforms, Spotify, all of them. Okay, check us out. Definitely subscribe and like the show. And we're looking forward to having a good time talking about tech, gaming, and entertainment. Uh, Daniela, how are you today? I am doing pretty good. Pretty good. We actually have some good mo- like news coming in, stuff happening. We're getting through that holiday, you know, dry news section there. So it's really exciting for this year. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we're going to jump right in. We're going to jump right in. So first thing is Vision of Mana not coming to Xbox Game Pass. Xbox confirms. Now, uh, the question I wanted to ask at, at the top of the show, uh, do you think Xbox Game Pass is still the best deal in town? I was hesitant, you know, at the beginning on that particular subscription model stuff. Uh, but now, you know, I've been using it, you know, so I definitely want to hear your thoughts first and I'll give mine after. What do you think about Xbox Game Pass now? It for sure is still worth it. I, I mean, I I love my PlayStation. I, I'm still subscribed to it, but I'm also subscribed to Xbox, even though I don't have an Xbox anymore. Um, their service is just it's just awesome and can't really beat it. And like you said, like at first I was kind of weary about it, but time and time again, I think Xbox has definitely proven um that the service is awesome. I mean, yeah, we're we're also also talking about Visions of Mana and that, you know, they confirmed that they're not it's not gonna be available day one on Xbox Game Pass, which is very interesting. But then you have games that just blew up like Pal World, which is we're gonna be talking about later on. Um, that people just I, I they get access to these new games immediately without paying for that huge price tag initially. That's I think that's awesome. And I can't I have nothing, absolutely nothing negative to say about it. So I think it's still worth a subscription. It, regardless if you have the Xbox or not, because you still have a PC that's available on PC, I say, why not? Yeah, I I say, why not now, right? But in the beginning, I was hesitant. And I think the thing now that people are considering, and I'll just, I'll just be, I'll just make it really personal. I would like to see all the games on Xbox Game Pass day one. I know that's difficult to do with, you know, probably contracting and different things like that, you know, payment structure, whatever that means, agreements, right? With uh, the game developer, and you know the conversation with microsoft so i think for me seeing a lot of games being day one on a platform is a plus because you don't have to go pay the you know 49.99 or 60 dollars depending on what the price is for the title and i think that that's one of the things that you know people appreciate about having those services like when you think about netflix and what they've done with the subscription model and paramount you know, and Hulu and right. so you can go down the list of all the different companies and what they've done with the subscription model. And we like it because we just open uh, the particular app and platform and we just access all this stuff. Right. And we can watch it at will. And sometimes they take our favorites off of the platform. But for what we do have, I think it's a lot of good stuff for uh, the Xbox Game Pass and all the other, you know, streaming platforms that we use for movies and etc cetera, etc cetera. any other additional thoughts on that so i do have a question for you now that you bring up like you know netflix you bring up paramount you bring up hulu when do we get to a point where i'm not saying xbox is going to increase their subscription services anytime soon but it's not like it hasn't been done before now when it comes to netflix they keep increasing their prices their subscription they're locking down like you can't share it with somebody who doesn't live with you all of these things that it's getting to the point where people are trying to figure out like is it worth it for me people are canceling their subscriptions so what do you think would be that price point for xbox where people will start complaining about is this worth the monthly or the annual for the right. service right so what is it at now 11.99 something like that i'm gonna be honest i don't know i just pay for it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I just pay for it. I don't know. Right. Pay. Okay. So, so because you you appreciate the platform, you just pay, right? And I think yeah. that because they they offer so much value. If a game is sixty dollars, then and you're gonna play that game in its entirety, it already did a lot for you. You see what I'm saying? So I, I think that's gonna be very difficult. If it goes to like twenty bucks a month, then or, or even close to that, I think people are going to have a lot of. You, there's, there's going to be a lot of murmuring in the community if it goes to twenty dollars a month. I don't think it's at twenty dollars a month. I think the ultimate pass is maybe twelve, thirteen. You know, and, and you know, I'm guessing here, so so don't 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 beat me up about that. But I think close to twenty. 
I, I pay for it blindly. Right. Because it's a good service. Like I'm okay with what I'm getting out of it. I should probably buy that. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. So, so there's certain things. The ultimate edition. I had to go and Google this. Ultimate edition is $17 a month or $16. Okay. All right. So it's right there. Okay. So if it increases another dollar or two, I think the community is going to complain. Oh, it's too much. But the thing is, they're going to play the games. They're going to have a lot of day one titles they're going to play. They're going to stream those things. They're going to benefit from streaming those things and even monetary right benefits. And so it's like, where do you say you're already getting a benefit when you don't have to pay $60 or, or $49.99 or $29.99 for, you know, like a hi-fi type of title or a turtles type of title. So I think that there's, there's like gray areas when it comes to that, but it's already giving a lot of value. And I think I had to see that to say, hey, maybe I was being, you know, uh, tough on, you know, that that model. But uh, there was one video I remember watching where someone said, well, you own them. Right. And I think that was very misleading when they were talking about the Xbox Game Pass in the beginning, because I do not own anything, because if I stop paying for Xbox Game Pass, I will not have access to those games anymore. And I know we said that this title is probably going to be the shortest one. It's already probably the longest one. But I think we have to have this conversation because it's extremely important. Once you stop paying for any of those services, you don't have access to those movies anymore. You know, you're not going to see Halo, you know, if you stop paying for Paramount, it's just not going to happen. Right. And I think that we have to be honest about that. So $17.99, if we get close to $20, people are going to complain. But if Microsoft adds more to the service, you're going to be happy and you're going to pay the price. And that's just, you know, how it is. Any other, any other thoughts on that? I do have one last thought on it. So as, as far as just a general gamer, not a content creator, just your average gamer, I think this price point is really nice. And I can see people that the average gamer who doesn't create any content. Yeah, they would start complaining about that price point. Content creators bring going off of what you were saying, you know, you're getting your value out of it. You're getting these games to play, to stream, to experience and not having to spend $60, $70 or whatever it may be. Um, I think I'm going to go in the extreme end here. If you are doing your content creation, even part time or having, you know, having something new to stream on the extreme side of it, please do not listen to me, Xbox, and do this. But even if it was $24.99 a month, um, I still think that it is amazing value for content creators to be able to just, just, you know, invest that within themselves to have these fresh games available to them day one. And not even just new games. They have like a whole library, a whole bunch that they can choose from. I, I believe it also includes the EA membership. So that's awesome. You get their whole library. Um, to be able to create content off of that. And if you're really smart and you set up really correctly, that subscription is a tax write-off. So, you know, you're you're benefiting from it. I do not want it to be $24.99 Xbox, but I'm just saying, even if it went up to that, I think that's a great value. Whereas services, I know there's a whole different type of medium like Netflix that's getting up there in price that I'm not even too happy with, but we use it enough. <sighs> Yeah, I I'm think... not enjoying it because they're taking away TV shows that I really, really love. When I start to fall in love with it, we get one or two seasons and then it's gone. Like, I have trust issues with Netflix. Whereas time and time again, Xbox has continued to just, like, be A1 with their service. So, yeah, Xbox. I think I was going to wait till later, but I think we might as well talk about it now, right? So bring in, let's bring in Power World into the conversation. A content creator has the Xbox Game Pass. They download Power World week one, day one. They decide to stream on their Twitch or YouTube with Power World. They get thousands of views because the game is popular. It came out of the gate with over 2 million concurrence or whatever it had, you know, first week or first day. So that creator is going to benefit immediately with that title because the title was day one on the platform. So, so even Power World. So, you know, quick reactions to that. I did play a little bit. It's very interesting. I'm not a crafting a person per se and i think that's hypocritical even saying it because destiny has levels uh, of it where you can craft or different things you can craft in it so i'd rather craft in that than craft in a power world type of genre game but uh it looks beautiful it, it plays well didn't have any issues with it so quick reactions for me you know it is fantastic any thoughts on power world 
I want to take a couple of days off from work if I could to go and play it because I know I have friends who are playing it. I think it, I, I love it. I, I've seen clips of it. I haven't watched like full streams of it yet, but the seeing the clips, seeing how much fun, I love crafting. I love that type of crafting. I don't know about your destiny crafting, but <laughs> more so guns than anything. <laughs> like, you know, crafting and base building. That's like, that's fun to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, just jumping off of that, um, just getting that day one available to you. Come on, you can't go wrong because that is that is the hot thing right now. And the fact that you didn't necessarily have to pay just for this one game directly, like it's just got available to you, um, I think is fantastic. Like, how can you be upset about that? And like, I don't see it really dying out anytime soon. People are going to enjoy this game for, for quite some time. I mean, yeah, every game has its own little trends and everything that where it got its highs and lows. But then, you know, you have patches, you have updates that come out that opens up new features and get, you know, get right back into it again. I see Power World being that game. Um, it's going to be sticking around for a bit. I don't know about Fortnite a bit, but, you know, it, it's still going to, you know, be worth its value. Regardless if you're only playing it for this month. Or you're playing it for the next several months. Your subscription for the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, for sure. Power World is, you know, is doing its thing uh, for sure. So uh, next thing that we have is uh, Cliffy B uh, has moved on from Gears. And I think he really wanted to work with Gears again, but as a consultant, but they never really got back to him. So there are crickets there. Do you care that he would consider working with Gears? Do you think that would really impact uh, the genre? Or, or the the franchise, if you will, if he were to work with Gears at this point, we've seen. I think so. so, so before you know, I give it to you because I'm not going to say any thoughts on it first. I definitely want to hear your thoughts first. Um, we had a few Gears that I know you weren't a fan of. I, I don't know if it was Judgment in the middle. There are a few that you were like, eh, not your thing, yeah. right? And then we had a uh, Gears Four uh, that came out that looked pretty good. You know, it was well received, and in Gears Five, you know, well received as well. Uh, so now here we are. So what do you, what's your take on Gears now as a series and a franchise? Because you're you're a big uh, Gears fan, so I don't feel like it quite hit as hard as you know the first the first three did, and definitely not as hard as when you know when Cliff Lazinski left. Um, yeah, Judgment was bad. We're just never gonna acknowledge that as the Gears universe. At least I won't. But I mean, it's still a good game. It was still enjoyable. But I think having his input, somebody who is such an integral part of building up this world um, that so many people enjoyed, um, has a huge impact. Even if he's just there as a consultant, um, I think really hardcore fans just just knowing that and hearing that he has some part in in this series again is a huge thing. So I think it's kind of like a missed opportunity. But at the same time, I mean, he left for a reason, right? So it's kind of interesting to want to come back. I mean, he has his own personal reason wanting to find other projects moving on. You know, I, people just want to experience different things. I get that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of really amazed that they just didn't even take him up on his offer. I, I don't know what he was asking for. Maybe it was a price point thing. Maybe it's just because they have so much things going on in the background. But I, I think having him being a part of it would have would have had a very positive effect to it. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I'm trying to think, was he asking that at the heart of the acquisition that was taking place? And then all the different things, like you said, that was going on during that time. So maybe that has something to do with it. And then the other thing too, is like, um, because the the series, we've kind of grown up with the series and we've seen uh, the series even change genre from the first one to, you know, the the fifth game. I think the fifth game... And even the fourth actually went back to the, not necessarily jump scare, but it kind of went back to that feel that, that we appreciated in the first Gears, you know. Uh, Gears 3 became an arcade game more so than uh, the, second, the second game. We followed the story very closely from the first to the second game. The third game, maybe, but the characters started getting a little bit, you know, um, not, not as in-depth as, you know, the first, you know, reaction that we had with, with the first characters. Um, yeah. the first game. Uh, so, so it was interesting to actually watch, you know, how this series kind of played out and, and how we feel about the characters now for the fourth game and the fifth game, uh, for gears. Do I even care that he would have jumped on there? I think it would have been good insight if they had him on, but I don't think it's going to affect the series in terms of, uh, the writing and the direction because the fourth game was good. The fifth game was good. Right. So, so I don't think that was 
absolutely necessary. Now, let's see what happens with the next gears. And if that doesn't, you know, capture, you know, our feel for what we love about gears from the PVP standpoint and, and everything else in, in between, then it's going to be like, okay, maybe uh, they should have, you know, taken him up on, on that particular offer. But the other thing to consider here as well is, you know, he's done books, I think, maybe comics. He, he went to that genre uh, of, of, or field, I should say. Um, he is in the restaurant business from what I've seen with some of the things that he's talked about on his social media. So it's not something that, it's not like he doesn't have anything that, you know, on his plate, you know, it's just for the love of the game, he wanted to, you know, partake in and consult uh, for gear. So I don't think it's like a total loss, uh, but I think they'll be okay based on what we've seen with Gears 4 and Gears 5. Yeah, and, and my last comment on to help with that is, yes, 4 and 5 were good, but then at the same time, having a seasoned person there that's, that's been there in the beginning, their input or, you know, comments, direction can make a good game a great one. Of course, that depends on what level that he was willing or wanting a part of it, but, I mean, it could make, it could potentially a good, great. Um, yeah. And then on another topic of that, because you're going down these avenues about what he's doing, apparently he does stand up comedy too. And I'm kind of very curious about that. Like, oh my, all right, I want to see, I want to see this. I want to, I've been like on this little thing about watching lately. So I'm like, oh, really? Well, that's an interesting choice. I want to see. So I'm like, where, like, where's your TikTok clips, Cliffy B? Like, I want to see them. I want to laugh. Not necessarily at you, but whatever <laughs> jokes you have. Right. <laughs> I just want to watch. So, so if you're doing comedians, of course, you know, Dave Chappelle recently released something on Netflix. So I'll uh, consider that. And then uh, one of my favorite comedians now, uh, I think I've mentioned him to you before, Andrew Schultz. He actually does uh, Flagrant 2, um, you know, big, you know, comedian, not necessarily up and coming. He has arrived. He's selling out, you know, big stadiums at this point. I think he's going to do the garden, Master Square Garden soon. If he hasn't already done that already, one of my favorites, uh, the, the comedy is, is flagrant. Okay. So just, you know, heads up there. Uh, definitely, uh, good things to, to check out for sure. Um, cyberpunk, uh, you know, I don't know where we are. Cyberpunk last thing that we've seen, uh, worked out really well, uh, with Idris Alba being you know, at the helm of some of the things that they've done in the recent, uh, DLC or, you know, big story DLC, if you want to call it that. Uh, but what I have here, multiplayer being considered for Cyberpunk 2077 sequel, says CD Projekt Red. Any thoughts on that? I think it's still a long ways out. Like, it's nice. It's a nice idea. And I'm sure people are looking forward to it. But with them working on Witcher and wanting to, um, you know, up their staff to work on this game, I feel like a lot of their time and resources put towards that. I'm not saying that they're ignoring Cyberpunk, but I feel like adding the multiplayer aspect to it, I don't think is like top of their priority. I think it's a nice idea. It might be a few years. I think they're just stoked. Like, finally, we got all the updates, all these patches, and we made our game as great as we intended to make it. Um, and they're just like kind of trying to sail through that as they work on it. Witcher. Yeah. So, so this one is interesting for me, right? Because I think at this stage, I realized that most of my gaming isn't single player experiences with the exception of Miles Morales, which I went through, you know, recently and, you know, they were on sale over the holidays. So picked them, picked up, uh, you know, Spider-Man as well and also God of War. But I realized that I really mostly play multiplayer games and and even Power World was interesting, just, you know, t uh, checking that out, you know, briefly as, as like really briefly, right? Um, so seeing something like this, you know, have multiplayer, I think is really exciting. And I'm not necessarily in a rush to get it because of all the different multiplayer things that we have av available now. So I think that kind of helps, you know, the waiting game, you know, and hopefully they take the same approach that they took when they were making the last story DLC you know, take as much time as you need, you know, delay if you need to delay to make it the best experience possible. So you don't have to relive some of the things that we experienced when you first released, you know, Cyberpunk 2077. So, so that PR and that damage control has been cleaned up for them because of what they did, the stellar job they did with the last uh, DLC story, big expansion. I shouldn't, yeah, big, it was a big expansion, right? That they put out, it's really revamping the game. And I think that really served them. So um, I could I could wait on that. I could definitely wait on that. Yeah, I I don't see it just 
being something they put together all willy-nilly over here. So, but at the same time, I just don't think it's as important or as big of a push. I'm not saying that they're not working on it. They're not planning it. They're not building it up or something, but just not a top priority. 100%. 100%. Mass Effect is coming to Destiny 2 next month. New collaborations, costumes, and stuff like that. You know, it's not a big topic. If you didn't know about that, now you know. Okay. So that's what we're going to do there. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West uh, Complete Edition gets March release date on PC. Still haven't done any Horizon, Daniela. I know we're terrible people. <laughs> we are terrible people. <laughs> right. So um, it looks good. I hear great things about Horizon and I don't have anything you know bad to say about it. So if that's your thing, look, look forward to what's happening in March. We did talk about Power World. So so we'll kind of skip that uh, vertical video platform. TikTok once uses to shoot horizontal videos. And with that, it's going to give them a video boost in the algorithm. Daniela, Daniela, thoughts on that? I'm trying to understand why. Okay. Uh, YouTube. Okay, now. Yep. <laughs> That's all you had to say. That's it. That's it, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, the, the ultimate platform that we've seen offer a tremendous uh, career life changes originally, if we want to say, you know, at this point, was YouTube. And YouTube continues to innovate and stay at the forefront of not only the technologies, but, you know, the different formats that we're enjoying. They have the shorts. Live streaming is a great experience on YouTube now because of all the lessons that they've learned from Twitch. So who else is chasing them? TikTok is going to chase them. Instagram is going to chase them as well. So quick thoughts on that. Does that mean that they're going to their GUI that goes along with it? Because all of their videos, all creators on TikTok, it's all shot vertically. So to be switching to horizontal video which took me a while to get used to i'm just gonna say this like i don't know why i guess i'm getting old but <laughs> i've gotten used to vertical videos um switching that to horizontal i mean there's some videos on there that will give you like you know a little prompt of like they'll start vertical but then there's a little prompt as like oh turn phone sideways this way yeah um I, I, I have a couple of thoughts on that that's automatic or is it just something that they're just trying to implement? Like, I, I guess I have to go back to using TikTok a little bit more um, because right, right now, a pet peeve of mine is watching horizontal shot video, but it's kept in a vertical landscape and like you can't really like you make the adjustment it. to it. Right. Yeah. Because like when you watch like a horizontal video in vertical, I mean, you get less detail. I mean, you get the whole shot. But it's taking up only one third of the screen, you know? So, so TikTok going to implement something where it's just like, hey, if it's shot vertically, it just automatically adjusts. And right. Do a quick thing. I'm like, that. that's my whole thing about it. Yeah. So, you know, with, with all these things that, as we've seen over the years, they test it first and they see how, you know, the creators respond to it. You know, the first, you know, initial creators that get the opportunity to test it out and then they roll it out to everybody else. Every platform does that at this point. I think for me, when I think about it, it's adapting with the times, right? Because YouTube did not have shorts. So they had to adapt with the times, you know, AI, whatever November it was, you know, took us, you know, by storm and every company is implementing AI in their stuff now. You know, even TikTok has a slider when you're uploading new videos and it says something to the effect of um, if it's AI content or it was produced with AI, check this box. Right. So it's so it's everywhere. So now the next evolution for TikTok and they already have 10 minute videos from what I understand, because I recently uploaded a video that was four plus minutes and they already have 10 minutes, you know, for TikTok. So another, you know, we need to add this. So now what's next? You know, we see a lot of vertical videos with the blurred top and a blurred bottom. So it's already a little box that is horizontal. Technically, it's just smaller, right? So now what's the next step? The next step for TikTok would be to make it, you know, completely full where it doesn't have to be blurred at the top or bottom. And and here we are, right? And I think that every company is going to find a way to stay competitive. And I think TikTok for a platform, from what I understand, it was Musical.ly first, right? And then it rebranded to what we know yeah. now as TikTok. And I always looked at it as a platform that people were just dancing on. But now I'm actually posting, you know, different clips on it and, you know, 
videos and stuff like that because it's a platform that has a, an incredible algorithm. And on top of that, if you put the hashtags, you know, correctly, your stuff will get found within minutes and you'll get literally hundreds of views within minutes. So it's it's just the evolution of the times. And even uh, Gary Vee did, did a live stream. I just want to mention that while I'm thinking about it. He did a Q&A live stream uh, this week on his Twitch channel where he was just answering questions about, you know, platforms. And he was like, if you have the ability to go live on TikTok, which means that you have at least a thousand followers, I think that's the the number for them just yeah, go live i don't have it yet okay i don't have it yet but at some point you know i do believe that i'm going to get that and i've downloaded the tiktok desktop tool which you can stream from that tool once you get the ability to have access to that so so they have a lot of things already in place for you know the live stuff and the next evolution will be the the video setup where it'll be you know, no blurred bottom or top. So we'll see what they do with that. I kind of like how YouTube kind of does it. I mean, it auto rotates depending if you want to blow up the screen, use a whole, your whole phone. But even with their vertical use of it, I like how you can read comments, leave comments, look for the next video that it gives you options. Like, so that bottom half of your screen is being utilized for something. And I feel like, to, yeah, if that's what they want, the whole horizontal video shooting and everything like that it it's gonna be something similar to that i assume but i also wanted to auto rotate with my phone if i don't want to, i yeah, want to see sure. the full screen so we'll we'll see how that you know grows and what it yeah yeah it should be exciting stuff for sure when it comes to that um monkey man i don't know wasn't on my radar <laughs> okay so danielle what do you think about that it wasn't on mine too initially, but that trailer was fantastic. Absolutely. I can see, I can definitely see where they draw all the similar similarities to John Wick. But I also think like, don't just, you know, chalk it up being, oh, you know, the Indian John Wick. No, I mean, there's a lot of great action films like that. And a lot of different films that took inspiration from John Wick that brought its own elements to it that made it unique made it its own and i definitely feel that from the monkey man trailer <laughs> which looks fantastic and a lot of fun i mean i i don't know how similar the story is going to be but from the trailer i didn't get that vibe the action sequences yes i got the john wick vibe the story uh, i didn't i didn't get that from the story quite yet i mean we haven't watched it yet it comes out in april but even if it has like people I'm not saying that people are, but if people complain, it's like, oh, it's just a knockoff John Wick. Who doesn't love a great action film? Who? Like, come on. It looks like a lot of fun. I want to watch it. If you haven't seen the trailer, really think you should. You're going to fall in love with it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really fantastic. And I think uh, one of the things that I was watching, um, I was watching a video on YouTube. And one of the things that they said is that, uh, and it was like uh, how to create thumbnails and, you know, cin cinematography and photography related conversation. And it says something to the effect of in almost every set, there is a director of photography, which is why you get those beautiful shots and you get those, you know, those awesome, you know, sceneries and stuff like that. And I think that when I think about Monkey Man and after watching that trailer, I'm like, it's just it's just beautiful to watch and you kind of start watching you know documentaries and even movies from a different lens just knowing that someone is there just to make sure that they're taking the most amazing shots for us to appreciate the scenes when they come in and how they start you know et cetera, et cetera. so so that trailer was was really dope it wasn't on my radar but it's definitely one that i'm going to bookmark to watch uh for sure and anything um wick inspired or woo in terms of the choreography, right? I think that we have to watch those things no matter what, because they're legends um, at what they do when it comes to choreography and, and things of that nature. And even, of course, you know, the Wick style type of film. So those, those are my thoughts on that. Uh, my last one is, and this is something so minor, but I kind of really appreciated. Okay, first of all, action movies are not always the most realistic, but they're exciting to watch. But there's this one scene in there, which I've seen in numerous movies and action flicks of like, you know, you have you have the guy running towards the window and then he jumps and he like kind of like curls up and he smashes through the window to escape. 
I appreciated in this scene that he went to do that and failed. Right. <laughs> like, right. Action movies make it look like it's so easy to do to that. To break a window, right. Yeah, you just throw your body into it and you just escape whatever, you know, situation that you're currently in. But like, yeah, I I I strangely had appreciation for that like one little like five second scene in this trailer. Cuz I, I I thought I thought he was going to go through the window, but I was just like that's a thing. yeah that that's definitely a good take yeah so i'm looking forward to it and if you haven't watched the monkey man trailer highly recommend it Add no it to that's your dope list. no that's dope good good take good take on that uh playstation state of play broadcast this week uh the 31st that is wednesday um i'm excited want to see what they have going on any thoughts on that i don't know what to expect i like going and do these things just with no expectations not saying low ones just like just surprise me these things, I just want to be surprised. I want the inner gamer and not the indie journalist and me to be, you know, looking out because they are, there are email lists that like says, hey, this is what to expect and be bringing out. Don't talk about it till so-and-so date. Um, I well, I have to, I have to correct you on that incredible indie journalist, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I just like that whole, you know, you, you we we put get put or we ask to be put on these email lists you know things that's coming up what to look forward to so you can you know already have your posts already ready for when they announce it as it goes through for me i just i like the element of being surprised sometimes so i'm kind of that's how i'm going into the state of play that will be available tomorrow so yeah I, i'm with you i have no idea what they're talking about and i didn't even try to google to see if they were going to talk about a particular title or things that they were going to bring on board, I have no idea. Uh, but we'll definitely check it out and report back for sure. Uh, Skull and Bones will have an open beta that's going to run between February 8th until February 11th. Daniela, this is one that you've been waiting for for a long time. Okay, and I think we're almost there. So uh, almost. What's, your, what's, your take, what's your take here? It only took six delays. Right six of them right and i know i keep saying for every game that's ever delayed for whatever reasons just take your time you know you want the player experience to be amazing six is kind of a lot though okay yeah. just gonna say six is kind of a lot so to see and know that this date is literally right around the corner is amazing and i hope with all the delays that they had to do um that it ends up really being worth it i personally really love pirates i love vikings i love i love action i mean there's no vikings in this one but i i do love the sailing aspect which is you know black flag i, I love the entire pirate experience of it all and the sailings and so they have skull and bones and you know what i i did get a i did get to play it on the showroom floor at e3 and i i, I did like it I'm not going to say, oh, like, there were certain elements that could have been better, but I enjoyed what I got to play. Was it a little bit lacking? Yes. But at the same at the same time, I didn't know what to expect at that time. I didn't know what they were going to be presenting. And you only get to play this small part of it. So, you, like, you, basically, you only get to know what they're willing to show you. So the fact that they had to go back, put in delays, and realize that this isn't enough. This isn't what, you know our fan base is asking for and add on to it and create the game that people are expecting. Fantastic. I just wish it didn't take six delays. Right. Right. And it but looks, it really, it really does look good. Yeah. That looks really good. I still have my skull and bones original shirt that I got from that. I have two, actually there's two, there's two moments. I like the whole defined thing. So I remember, um, I remember trying out the game enjoying it i was talking to the sound director and you know talking about the music and even the song that they they chose for their original and first you know announcement of skull of bones was actually my cousin's song and like learning how they even ended up on on her song and they didn't they just learning that process i thought it was amazing and getting to talk to them but at the same time completely having nothing to do with skull of bones the fact that Hideo Kojima, who was walking the showroom floor, <laughs> stopped by their booth to talk with them and just like hang out. And I didn't get to say a single thing to Hideo, but the fact that I got to stand two feet right next to him was more than enough. And it's cemented in my in my mind 
possibly why I think I'm going to love this game forever. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he was there and he has nothing to do with the game. He was just walking the showroom floor with, you know, his people and his, his staff and security and just wanted to talk to them about their own game. And I'm like, you can stop answering my questions. I totally understand you just ignoring me. Cause my son. So yeah, I have two memories that I like, I love that it's attached to. <laughs> no, that's awesome. No, definitely cherish uh, the memories for sure. Like it looks really good. And, and again, I, like I've said to you, you know, in the past and even now, like if you stream it, I'll, I'll pull up and watch it. Um, I know it's something that you're extremely excited for, especially the genre, the type of game uh, it is. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's running February 8th uh, through 11. If you can catch that, you know, definitely see what you can do. And, and we can talk more about it after um, once once that happens. And last but not least, making The Last of Us Part 2 is coming on February 2nd. Uh, it is a documentary. Uh, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts on that before we wrap. A uh, Last of Us is a game that I've watched from afar. I've appreciated uh, the bits that I did watch from the TV series. Um, I have nothing negative to say about Last of Us. I think it, it is a world that, you know, I understand a little bit of because of what I've been able to see on screen. Um, there is a large fan base uh, for Last of Us. And this documentary is going to give me even more perspective. Any thoughts on that? Um, there I Pretty much, I have to mirror what you said. There's nothing bad about the universe of The Last of Us and what Naughty Dog has done, um, whether it be the video game um, or their TV series and whatever aspect, or even, you know, the podcast that they had for it, um, for the TV series. I think just being able to piggyback and have these little, I guess, spidering of other little projects that are still associated with this so fans can get more of the world and learn more and just see, like, this game come to life. Um, I really have nothing negative to say about it at all. I mean, I guess this is going to have to suffice until, you know, season two comes out. Yeah, for sure. Which I really would like, want to see. But yeah, uh, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, documentaries I can do. I can do fairly quickly uh, versus actual episodic content. I, I need to really be interested in the episodic content for me to like, you know, go all in. Uh, but documentaries I can do. So I'm looking forward uh, to seeing that. And I think that's all we have. Any final thoughts before we wrap? Um, I know you said that you, you're totally in for a documentary. I've been watching, uh, it's not a documentary, it's episodic, but it's really good. It's only eight episodes. I have one more episode to watch. Um, The Brother's Son on, on Netflix, if you haven't watched it yet, it's okay. pretty good. Um, it has Michelle Yeoh, it has a really okay, great- Okay, now I gotta watch it now. <laughs> Asian cast there, so it's got some action, it's got an interesting story to it, but something that's good in episodic, only one season, eight episodes, The Brother's Son. Yeah, I'm I'm a big Michelle Yeoh fan, so you got me once you said Michelle Yeoh, so uh, that's that's good. So so we'll wrap on that. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. And Danielle, where can they find you? You can find me on all the socials at Miss DJM. And where can they find you? You can find me at Uriah U R I Y Y A on most socials. And looking forward to recording with you again, Daniela. That's all we have. See you guys next time. Bye, guys.